I'll be talking about gender equality with a focus on women's safety and access to leadership. 10 years ago, I was a core member serving in a rural community and was enrolled to participate in registering qualified voters for the election. I was approached and offered bribe to register underage children to make them eligible to vote. And for refusing, I was sexually violated. Well, this is not a unique experience to me as UNICEF's data shows that one in four Nigerian girls will experience a form of sexual violence before the age of 18. This was evident during the COVID-19 lockdown as Nigeria recorded 3,600 cases of rape within the space of three months. Violence occurs in different spaces, takes different forms and comes from a place of power, control and sense of ownership to women's bodies. Women have to get up daily to prepare to go to the market and have to fear coming back home. Women are harassed within academic institutions, in the workplace, and sometimes get killed for getting involved in politics. The third picture on my screen is the picture of Salome Abu, a political leader in Kogi State who was burned alive because of cultural views about women in politics. Just to give you some context, culture, religion, and tradition plays a huge role in how women are perceived and treated in society. And it's through this lens, societies in developing countries form policies. I mean, a woman is trusted to keep a home, multitask with different domestic chores, yet cannot be trusted enough to handle the affairs of a nation. Although countries with female presidents or prime ministers illustrate women's capacity to make more informed decisions, exemplify good leadership, and incorporate women-centered strategies. This lack of strategies and systems to pre prevent and protect the rights of women made me start Stand to End Rape Initiative so as to test run strategies that can help move women's rights forward and serve as a bridge between survivors and the law enforcement agencies. But we wanted to do more. We wanted to be a movement of change through advocacy, partnerships, prevention, and support. To achieve this, we needed to target drivers, intersectional issues around GBV, and the role that the four levels of society play. I mean, the individuals, families, communities and institutions. In 2014, when I started doing community engagement, I remember speaking to community members and asking how survivors and women have been treated. I asked them why they celebrate successful women who visit the community, but encourage their daughters to aspire to become wives while shaping boys to take leadership. Not to say that being a wife is bad, but women need to aspire to more. Women need to take up leadership spaces be seen and be heard. I also asked why girls are being shamed from, for being abused. And they happily call me my daughter, which is a phrase to you know, call anyone you know your daughter. I informed them that I'm a rape survivor and I'm living a great life today because my parents supported me. So for them to get a daughter like me, they also have to be like my parents. I realized that storytelling is a powerful tool to raise awareness create change and demand accountability. And this is why in 2016, when we began pushing for policies around women's rights, we saw a lot of pushbacks and we realized that we had to use media. We partnered with the BBC on the Sex for Grids documentation and through that effort and engagement with students and stakeholders, the bill was introduced and passed the third hearing. This is the power of partnership. Partnership is a new currency to leverage, strategize, and create change. Initiatives will, must learn to combine technical expertise and resources to governance action towards achieving a common goal. In this instance, SDG5. This was why in 2020, we joined forces with a group of brilliant women to form the State of Emergency GBV Coalition. And within a month of engagement, we got the Nigerian Governors Forum and the House of Representatives to declare a state of emergency on GBV in Nigeria and put pressure on them to implement policies that protect women's rights. I must however mention that we have zero number of female governors and even fewer women in the House of Assembly. Women make up almost half of the population but are not fully represented in leadership and political positions. Gender equality is not about signing treaties or making global commitments to improve gender budgeting. 
It's really implementing strategies that improve women's access to opportunities and positions. As an organization, we will be educating the management of corporate organizations this year on what it means to have women in leadership positions and ways to prioritize their safety so that they can remain in such positions. Achieving gender equality comes with a sense of responsibility. We need to prioritize women's rights and safety while holding abusers accountable. We must actively hold ourselves and political parties accountable for discriminating against women who want to run for office. We need to scrap this practice of women running for positions of vice presidents or advisors. Not to say that these positions are bad, but women can also be president and we must begin to encourage this. We need to have more women sitting on boards and holding management positions and must ensure they earn equal pay to the male counterparts. At STEP, for instance, women sit on our board and hold all the leadership positions and we are winning while doing this. Organizations can do the same and they be must begin to invite the culture that sees women as active participants. This year and beyond, you should choose to challenge norms and practices that promote violence and take a stand to end gender bias and inequality by actively creating safe environments for women, economic and political leadership opportunities, policies and laws that promote women's rights and safety and implement them. At STEM, we're constantly working towards a day that violence will be a part of our history rather than our everyday lives. We take a stand to end rape and advance gender equality. How about you?